What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Dollar Mike and I'm back at it again with another video. In today's video, I want to bring you guys a credit card review. I've had this card for over two years, two years and six months to be exact, but no one's counting, right? Either way, I've had this card for a while and I've been meaning to talk about it for a while. So here is my full review of the Chase Sapphire Preferred over two years later. And spoiler alert, I still love it. Let's get right into the video. Let's go. Here it is, the Chase Sapphire Preferred, one of my favorite credit cards when I first got it, and still one of my favorite credit cards today. There is plenty of reason for me to recommend this card for anybody that may be looking for it today, and that has not changed one bit since I got it. Pretty much this credit card was actually marketed as, to me, I feel like a beginner's traveler's credit card. So if you just started out traveling, you didn't want to go and get a Amex Platinum or a Capital One Venture X, and you were looking for something that still had a little bit of an annual feed that we could get you into the gate traveling you know you didn't want to spend 500 600 700 dollars every single year on an annual fee but you still wanted to travel i feel like this was the go-to card and i still I still feel like today this is the go-to card for those beginner travelers like myself and then, you know, as I travel more, I'll upgrade to something else. And we'll see what that is in the future when the time comes. But regardless, let's dive deep into this card and discover all the benefits. But before we do that, if you want to go ahead and pick up this card, I would say when it comes to a recommended credit score, I would try to have at least a 700 credit score or higher before you go and apply for this card. I want to make sure you can get approved if you do want to go ahead and pick it up. And I'm telling you, you're going to want to pick it up with all the benefits I'm going to talk about today. I'm going over every single thing this card offers to you. So let's get into it. So let's get the worst thing out of the way first. And I don't even feel like it's that bad because it covers itself essentially, which is the annual fee. This credit card is $95 every single year. If you break that up, that's about what, $7 a month, pretty much effectively, something like that, six, seven bucks a month. But the point is $95 to pretty much be a card holder of the Chase Sapphire Preferred. Now, like I said before, the annual fee pretty much makes up for itself when it comes to all the benefits that you get. So let's talk about all those benefits. Let's start with the actual perks you get, and then we'll dive into the cash back. After the cashback, we'll dive into the travel and then we'll give our closing statement. So let's talk about the regular benefits first, the perks. If you wish to offset that annual fee, there are a lot of different things you can do. And the first perk that you get with this card is Instacart Plus. So if you guys don't know what Instacart is, Instacart is pretty much a grocery delivery service. If you guys want, you can use Instacart Plus, which you get a six month membership for free when you become a card holder with the Chase Sapphire Preferred. So that is an effective value of about 60 bucks. So if you're interested, than that you can knock off your annual fee by about sixty dollars if you look at the effective rate of how much money you would save from getting a six month membership of instacart plus you can you know you do the math and figure it out regardless the point still stands if you don't use instacart plus it's okay because they have other perks the next one that i have personally that i've used because i don't use instacart myself but the next one i do use a lot is doordash DoorDash Dash Pass. You will get a premium DoorDash Dash Pass membership. I've had the membership since 2020, and overall, I've saved over $500 using DoorDash Dash Pass because I order DoorDash pretty often. I'm not really that proud of it, but regardless, it happens, and I save a lot of money by using it. If you don't know what DoorDash Dash Pass is, it's pretty much a membership for DoorDash that you get for free just for being a card holder, and that membership pretty much covers you when it comes to delivery fees and also the extra fees that DoorDash charges, because you know, you go on DoorDash, you buy something for 10 bucks, and somehow the bill is $40, plus tip and everything like that, you know? So the point is, you save a lot of money with that, and I've saved well over $500 with it, and I can pull up a screenshot to show you exactly my account. I've had DoorDash Dash Pass since about 20, May, well, I think May or, May or June or July of 2020, and I still have it all the way up into 2024 for just being a card holder. So automatically, that DoorDash Dash Pass every single year membership is about $96 in value. So already, that's covering your entire annual fee every single year, at least for me personally, for the past two years now or three years now, and it'll still cover me for another year next year. And we'll see if they renew their membership or their partnership with DoorDash in the future. But the point still stands. Don't use Instacart or DoorDash. And there's another option for you, which is GoPuff. GoPuff is another little food delivery service type of deal. I personally don't use GoPuff, but you do get a $10 credit every single month for GoPuff all of 
throughout all of 2023. So if you started today, you would essentially get $10 every single month. If you got approved today, you can use that $10 credit to get whatever you want to get on GoPuff. It's a smaller food delivery service. So they'll go to like convenience stores and get you stuff like 7-Eleven and other stores, I guess maybe gas stations if you want like ice cream or something. I don't, I don't really know. Like I said, I don't use GoPuff, but $10 credit, hey, every single month, that equals up to about, if you got approved today, that will equal up to about $110 in value, which is also over the annual fee that you're going to be paying with this card. So right there, you already made the money back, at least for this year alone. And if you don't use GoPuff, Instacart, DoorDash, whatever, if you don't use any of that, there's still another option for you to effectively lower that um overall annual fee and that is the anniversary hotel credit so with this card you're going to get a 50 dollars anniversary hotel credit so every time you reach a year or the next year with your card they're going to give you 50 dollars in hotel credit so you would book your hotel stay with the chase sapphire preferred and you're going to get 50 dollars in statement credit once a year every single year after that very first year so overall cutting that annual fee down from 95 dollars down to what $45 because it's $50 every single year right so yeah but past all of that if you don't bother with any of that then honestly like you're tripping because you got to use one of these things right but regardless there is one other option for you and that one other option is the sign up bonus that you can get when you sign up and get yourself the chase sapphire preferred that sign up bonus is 60,000 points if you spend $4,000 in the first three months of signing up and you may say well Mike uh $4,000 sounds like a lot of money it is a quite a bit of money I personally spend $4,000 in three months, but not everybody will. So I would say if you do plan on spending that amount of money, that's fine. I wouldn't go out of your way to spend that amount of money. Only do that if that it comes up to your normal purchases or you got a big purchase coming up. Personally, like I said, I spend that much, but I would not go out of my way or put myself into debt to get the annual or to get the sign up bonus. So don't do that. If you feel as though you're not going to hit it, I would wait until you think you will hit it and then go ahead and try to apply for the card. Like I said, if you got a big purchase coming up and you already had the money for it, you pay the card off in full, all that kind of good jazz, then you're good to go. Either way, those 60,000 points that you get when you spend $4,000 in three months equals up to about $750 in travel credit that you can use for, you know, flights, hotels, um, car rentals, I guess you could say if you want to, or also $600 in a cash value. So that $600 in cash value effectively gives you a no annual fee card for effectively six years because $95 a year, six years, you, you know, you do the math, you know, $95, $600, you get the point. So you can either do a $600 cash back or you can do $750 in travel or even more than that. You're going to at least get $750 in travel by simply getting this card, using the sign up bonus, and boom, you're good to go with that. So another option for you. Past all that, that is essentially all the perks that they have for the card, but I think that's quite a bit. But we're not done because we started to talk about all the cash back that you get with this card, which is honestly amazing. So when it comes to cash back and the Chase Sapphire Preferred, you're going to get five times the points back on Lyft rides. So that means you go and, you know, use Lyft, not Uber, Lyft. They have a partnership with Lyft, I believe, until, I want to say December of 2024. I'm not entirely sure. I might have to double check that, but I'll put something on screen. You also can get five times the points back in Chase Travel. What I mean by Chase Travel, I mean is they have their own Chase Portal where you can go on their Chase Portal and essentially book your hotel stage. You can book your flights. You can book uh, rental cars. And you can do other little experiences on there. You're going to get five times the points back when you use your Chase card and book with Chase Travel. Now, typically on these Chase Travel or in the Chase travel portal is a little bit more expensive than if you went to hotels.com or Expedia or something like that so I wouldn't always use this but I would definitely take a look if you're you know planning a trip and you plan on going somewhere definitely take a look see how much more it's gonna cost you if you have to go through Chase Travel versus going on hotels.com or you know maybe booking a flight directly on or directly through an airline but regardless you're gonna get 5x points back if you do use Chase Travel past that you're gonna get 3x points back on food or dining so you're gonna get three times the points back on dining, you'll get it on food delivery services, and you'll also get that on takeout. So great option if you, you know, just eat out a lot. Not the best eat out a lot card. You know, I would say the Amex Gold is pretty solid for that, but this is still solid, and I can't complain with three times the points back on that. Past those three times the points back, you're going to get another three times the points back on online grocery purchases, and you're also going to get another three times the points back on wholesale clubs. So wholesale clubs like Sam's Club, uh, BJ's, um, who am I missing one? Costco, you know, the big boy. Regardless, you're going to get three times the points back on that and also on sale online groceries. So if you use Amazon Fresh, I personally order I, um, uh, my groceries with Amazon Fresh because I don't really like going to the grocery store 
just personal preference. Point is, three times the points back on that as well. But we're not done. You're still getting another three times the points back on streaming services, another two times the points back on all travel, no matter how you book it, and one times the points back on everything else. Now, like I said, you're gonna get a lot of points with just using this card. You get a lot of cash back, a lot of options when it comes to the cash back, and all those points I think is best redeemed for travel because that's how you get the most money or the most worth out of your points. If you don't have to use it for travel, that's what I personally use mine for. You can use it for cash back, you can use it to buy products and stuff like that. But like I said, travel is where you're gonna get the most bang for your buck. And who doesn't wanna take free trips around the world? Because I'm literally doing that in a couple of weeks simply by using the points that I got from this card and that's that. And we'll talk about that at the end of this video because I, we're going, it's worth it. So just stay tight, stay tuned, it'll be locked, just be locked in. But regardless, before we jump into the travel perks, let's talk about some more purchase protection you get when you actually use this card. One of the main things with a lot of credit cards is purchase protection. And when it comes to the Chase Sapphire Preferred, you're gonna get 120 days of coverage for damage or theft, and that's $500 per claim and $50,000 per account. So let's say I go out and buy um, an iPad. Let's say I go out and buy an iPad mini or something for like $400. I either break it or someone steals it from me within the first 120 days of my purchase. Guess what? If I bought it with this card, then Chase is going to refund me for the iPad that was either damaged or stolen, If I even if I didn't buy a warranty or anything like that, and I'll be good to go. They'll refund me the full amount. I just put in a claim, let them know, and that's pretty much it. That's $500 per claim and $50,000 per account. On top of that, you'll also get an extended warranty like most credit cards when it comes to the Chase Sapphire Preferred. You're actually just gonna get an extra year on whatever the manufacturer's warranty is. So as long as the warranty is less than three years, Chase is gonna add an extra year on it for you. So pretty much whatever coverage you get, say for instance, you buy a TV and there's a one year manufacturer warranty, which kind of sucks, but imagine if that's the case, you're gonna get two years because Chase is gonna cover one year and then the actual manufacturer warranty is one year as well. So that's nice as well, but of course you have to buy that product with this card, which makes sense, right? Now that that's out the way, let's talk about the main event, travel. This is the beginner's traveler card, I personally feel as though. So let's talk about those travel benefits that you're gonna get. The first one that I wanna mention today is the trip cancellation or interruption insurance. For this, as long as you're using this card when you go ahead and book your travel, you're gonna get $10,000 per person or $20,000 per trip insured when it comes to trips being canceled. Maybe you get sick, maybe someone else in your party or I guess your family or whatever gets sick, they'll cover you when as long as you use that card. So definitely, pretty solid. Pretty regular for a nice beginner's traveler card and also really nice feature to have that you don't get when you simply just book travel with a debit card or book travel with a card that just doesn't offer you benefits like this, of course. Past that, you're also gonna get a auto rental collision damage waiver coverage, pretty much. So if you go ahead and rent a car, you use this card when you rent the car, you can go ahead and waive that collision damage fee because Chase has you covered. And it's gonna be primary when it comes to the insurance. I don't, I've never used it personally myself, but it is a nice feature to have. And if you rent cars often, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So yeah, primary, not second. Secondary, it's gonna be primary and you can go ahead and waive that fee because they got they got you covered another travel perk is the baggage delay insurance so if your bags are delayed say for instance you're on the plane you get off the plane you go pick up your bags if your bags are delayed for more than six hours then chase is gonna cover you up to $100 every single day for five days so for whatever reason if your bags are delayed and you need some you know some clothes or whatever chase is gonna cover you $100 up to five days consecutively and you'll be good to go for your trip so you can go ahead and still get some clothes if you need some clothes or whatever you need to do because your bags are delayed for a couple of hours or maybe a day or two you also get trip delay insurance which is exactly what it sounds like if your trip's delayed for more than 12 hours chase will cover you and your family for meals and lodging up to 500 dollars per ticket pretty nice this actually happened to me personally when i went out to where was i at was it I think I was in, when I got to Cali last year, our person, our actual flight got delayed by a day, essentially. So since our flight got delayed by a day, I couldn't fly back home. And they actually gave us a hotel. Southwest had gave us a hotel. When Southwest gave us a hotel, I still had to pay for my own food. But I didn't have to pay for my own food because Chase had me covered. So 
I paid for the food and I just got it reimbursed and that's pretty much it. Past all that, that is pretty much the gist of all the travel benefits that you're gonna get. There are still other things left that I wanna mention real quick, which is the one-to-one -one point transfers. If you guys don't know about points transfers, then you'll learn about them when you get yourself a nice card like this because when you do points transfers, that's how you can possibly get even more money's worth of your points versus keeping it on Chase's portal and using it for maybe cash back or using it to buy a product. When you transfer your points out to maybe an airline or a hotel, you might get 1.25x on your points that you have, maybe 1.5, maybe even higher than that. The whole point is when you transfer your points out, you're at least gonna get a one-to-one -one match when you transfer your points out. So let's say you have 100,000 Chase points and you wanna transfer those points out to one of their point transfer partners. You can do just that. That could be a flight or a hotel or you know maybe a car rental place. I wouldn't do, do it for car rentals personally. But the point still stands that you can transfer those points out and they'll be worth exactly the same with that particular travel partner which is very cool. In some places, you might get even more points than that, just that one-to-one -one transfer, like I said before, which, like I said, is great because that's more value for your points, more value for your money, and you are gonna make points with this card by simply using the card. That's how you get points. It's that simple. But this is an extremely smooth process, and I had no issue transferring my personal points out when I booked a 20-hour flight to Thailand. Yes, I'm going to Thailand next month. I booked a 20-hour business class flight to Thailand with Singapore Airlines. Very nice, a $3,500 value. I got all for free, just had to pay for pretty much the taxes and the fees just by using my Chase points. So pretty excited about that. I'm literally going across the world in a couple of weeks and this will be the first time I've ever been outside the country. So we're gonna see how that goes and I'll probably bring some vlogs to you guys as well on my second channel. So if you haven't seen that, seen that or whatever, I'm trying to pump it back up and get it, everything going with it. It just takes time because I'm one man army here takes time but regardless if you haven't seen the second channel the link will be down below in the description so subscribe to the second channel there will be vlogs coming there's gonna be some type of content coming regardless i got too much content something's gotta come out <laughs> the point still stands though going to thailand use my points to get there and it was a one-to-one -one transfer with singapore airlines so great can't really argue with that like i said only spent about 60 dollars because like i said i use all of my points when well, i all of them but i use a lot of my points to cover the entire flight which is great so yeah and like I said, I got all the points by just simply using the card over the couple of years that I've had it. And I'm consistently still using the card, so I'm only gonna get more points in the future. You guys get the point. And lastly, since we're on the topic of points, you're gonna get an extra 25% value when it comes to your points if you redeem your points through the Chase Travel Portal. Like I said, that Chase Travel Portal is typically a little bit more expensive than you going to Hotels.com or Expedia or maybe directly to an airline's website. But if you get 25% more value when it comes to your uh, points, then it might be worth it to you. And if definitely if it's the same price as Hotels.com or whatever, then you're good to go. You can use it for that and save yourself some money if you wish to do so. I have a couple of friends that have had that have this card or just got this card and they automatically love it. One of them is actually, I think, stayed at four or five hotels for free now, you know, just because they use the card so much as actually their only credit card or at least one of their only credit cards. So they rack up points really fast when you use only one credit card. I have like 11. So kind of split things up depending on what I'm doing. But for someone that's just using everything on one card, bro, you're racking up points and you can do whatever you want to do with those points. But like I said, travel is probably one of the best things I recommend you do. So all in all, honestly, I have no complaints when it comes to this credit card. I, I don't know what to say negatively about it. I would say if it didn't technically have an annual fee, which it really doesn't, you know, that'd be great. But overall, I don't mind paying $95 every single year because literally all those benefits cover it time and time again, over and over, years and years. So I'm not worried about that at all. It's well worth your time. If you want to check it out, the link will be down below to go ahead and grab it. You normally do get some extra points if you use my referral link down below, but currently there's no uh, extra point program. So if you do use my link down below, you won't get any extra points, but it will help out the channel greatly if you appreciate to do so. It's completely up to you. I'm not forcing you to do anything like that. You can sign up with someone else's link or just sign up on your own completely. It doesn't matter to me. Just saying, if you wish to do so, just because I provided some information, that's great. Thank you very much. The best thing, honestly, you can do that you don't that doesn't involve you signing up or anything is liking the video so it can get out to more people. So I really appreciate it if you guys could just like the video. 
Thank you very much for that. Either way, which other credit cards would you like me to do a full review on, dive deep into? Because I'm actually possibly not looking at a replacement, but looking at more of an upgrade. So I've seen the Chase Sapphire Reserve, and I've also seen the Amex Platinum. I want to do a little bit more travel going forward, and also want to bring more of that content to you as well. So if you want to see more credit card videos, then definitely let me know down in the comments section below. And also let me know if you want to see a full review on any particular credit card and if I think it's worth it or not. There are other credit cards I have in my wallet right now that I'm kind of second guessing at this point in time. There's been some negative light on a couple of them and other stuff is just like, you know, credit cards come and go depending on the company. But regardless, yeah, let me know down in the comment section below what you would like to see. And that's really all I got for today's video. Grab yourself a Chase Sapphire Preferred. Um, it's going to be one of the best decisions you've ever made. Just saying. And make sure if you're getting a credit card, not this or any any credit card in general, make sure you're doing the right thing when it comes to a credit card. We want these things paid off in full every single month. We don't want to pay any interest. We don't do that. We don't pay any interest at all. I do not recommend you do that. That's at least the whole purpose of getting one of these and using it for whatever you want to use it for and traveling for free. You can't travel for free if you got to pay for interest. Just saying. Put your regular purchases on here. Go about your day. Rack up the points. Do whatever you want to do and you'll have a good life. Promise that. Either way, I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'm out. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Stay positive. Stay hydrated. Dollar Mike. Peace.